any questions now that you'd like to put to Steve, then please take the opportunity. We'll, we'll put him on the spot. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. I'd, I'd like to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? Sorry, mate. Stand up, mate. Oh, <laughs> Steve, yes. um, I want you to know that if you've mocked my dancing prowess in your book, I will soon. <laughs> it's um, going to cost us a fortune. <laughs> Seriously, so congratulations on the book, Thank and I'm going to give you now a magic wand. Turn the clock back. What would you change? Know what you know now. What would I change? Jeez, what a question that is. Um, <coughs> uh, football wise. Football wise. And your management career. Um, I would probably have handled the Colchester situation slightly different. Um, is the kids in here? <laughs> <laughs> No, I won't say. I, I would change that slightly, Mick. I, I don't want to go into details. I would probably just have gotten my bike uh, a lot earlier. And that's not being disloyal to Coach United. I think looking at it over the years, that was probably something I wouldn't change. Apart from that, on the football side, personally, I wouldn't change anything, Mick. I enjoyed every bit of it. The, the serious face comes on when you go into management coaching, doesn't it? Up to that point. No, I wouldn't change anything. Is that fair, fair comment? Thank you very much. <laughs> Your jump was alright, Mick. It's not bad. Are you hot? Stop it. Are you hot? <laughs> Are you hot? Can I just say, I love the story because I'm one of them. I'm going to bore you in a minute. The, the 70s for me, people remember, was the best period of football. I don't care what anyone says, the pitches were crap. Um, the kit was diabolic, shorts were up here. <laughs> I heard the girls quite like them, mate. So uh, Steve, I don't think Steve Downs here, is he? <coughs> Didn't turn up. No. Soggy. <laughs> <laughs> He used to have a massive fur. Uh, yes, right. We had a back four. He looked like Fellini on. Um, <laughs> Fellini looks like him with, with AIDS or something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the big afro. Um, <laughs> look at place forever. Is it Fellini? <laughs> Fellini, sorry, I must have the wrong thing. <laughs> oh, anorexic then. <laughs> <laughs> we, the back four was Cookie at right back, Mickey Cook, the fastest things on two legs, Steve Down and me, and Mickey Packer. And Mickey Packer isn't here tonight. He's in. He's a git, isn't he? He's in Marbella. <laughs> Hard choice, book launch, my bear. What do you think? My bear, right, fair enough. He was the left back. Now, very quickly, when, when you had numbers 1 to, one to 11 then, didn't you, mate? You don't have like, all the fancy numbers with your name on the back and all that rubbish. And then they'd laid your kit out, so you'd be sat, like, so the back four would be sat in it. Steve, me, Pack, and then blah, blah, blah. Mickey Walker at the end. Mick wouldn't say a word, never did say anything. Mickey Walker. And Ray Harford, bless him, who's passed now. Would be, you know, digging us out. We were at Rochdale, say Mick, yeah? <coughs> 1 1 nil. The pitch at Rochdale, the, 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 have you ever been to Rochdale? The soil there's like black and it's like soot. It's absolutely <laughs> filthy. We'd have the one, we'd absolutely coat it. Steve Down would have like snot and blood coming out of his nose. <laughs> and, <everything. laughs> and he'd have, he'd have all that white stuff, you know, the, the, the white lining. For some reason, he's always got it in his hair, Mick, didn't he? <laughs> you know, after him, you know, like all that hanging white stuff. And, yeah, I get it. And then Mickey Packer sat there picking bits of the winger out of his teeth. <laughs> when he put his teeth back in, that was. <laughs> and, you know, I had a big lump of whatever. I'd be covered in dirt, and Mick was sweating. We sat there. The other end, Ian Allison would be sat. Immaculate, Ian Allison. Ian Allison. Absolutely immaculate. Hair place. Not a mark on him. The pitch is filthy, and he hasn't even got. He's got a few mud spots on his socks, and that's it. Immaculate, just sat there. Ray Alford steaming up. Once again, he was sent off, pushing into me. You ain't good enough. He got booked. You shouldn't have got booked. Damn, what are you doing? He got booked and out his nose. <coughs> Cookie crossing wasn't good enough. Pack, you didn't kick the winger hard enough. He didn't go into the stand. <laughs> <laughs> and he lambasted us, and we really used to have the hump, didn't we, mate? Mm. Turn to Ian and go, and Ian, by the way, scored the winning goal. Skipped over the mud, <laughs> scored the winning goal. No mark on him. Blimpy. And I thought, he's having it. Different class somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> We want to kill him, didn't we? He's a great player, but don't get wrong. But that's where it was, and that was the 70s for me, you know? Brutal at times, but a great learning curve for me when I started in the early 70s. Mick had already been playing 15 years when I came to Boston. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? Huh. Following on from that, Steve, would you have stu still gone into management again if you could have that time again? Would you have uh, still gone into no. management? No, 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 yeah. Yes, no, I would, yeah. I'd, I'd stumbled into it, because a lot of people do. Greg Williams stumbled into it at Colchester, and he's done really well. You know, a lot of it. Steve Tilson stumbled into it at Southend, to be fair to him, and he's done really well. I stumbled in old shop because circumstances. No, I would still go into it. But I'd, I'd try and change things, but unfortunately, your hands are tied lots of times, um, and circumstances prevail, and, you, you know, you're limited at some clubs. But no, I would, I would still go into it. still do it. Yeah. 
Do you think you'll manage again, Steve? No. <laughs> no, I think about it. I don't. No, not at all. Sorry, Steve. Sorry. Um, Steve, I'm intrigued by the title of the book. I, I just wanted to know: Does it relate to the time that you banned fish and chips on the coach on the way back from Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> Is that when we had lasagna instead? No, we had um, bread, butter, and jam. <laughs> well, they deserved it. Uh, yeah, no, nothing to do with that, Stephen. At all. <laughs> do you welcome the introduction of football agents for transfers? Definitely not. And in the book, there's a bit there when uh, over Mark Kinsella dealt with his. Uh, I thought he dealt with it quite well. About four words. Five, yeah, five words probably, but uh, they weren't very nice. Because no, I think it's been an, it's a nightmare for managers. The Bosman ruling was a killer, and with the agents as well. You look at Steve McMahon. I'm back a few years ago. I didn't remember him. He one of the first players went on a Bosman was into one of the big clubs, and he never tried a leg for four months for Liverpool. And then I killed him because I'm a Liverpool supporter. You know, I can't. I couldn't imagine myself doing that. But if someone's dangling a million pound a year, and you know, it's after you've been on maybe fifty grand a year, you know, are you going to get put your head in, put your foot in, and commit yourself? You know, I don't know. I think the Bosman and the the agent situation has, has really done a lot of damage, but it's never going to go back, Bob, is it? Unfortunately. A bit like the 70s, it's never going to come back, is it? And the haircuts. By the way, Cookie, you know, do you think he looks like Phil Collins? <laughs> 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 no, 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 he does, doesn't he? No, he does. No, 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 no. And in the book, there's a picture of him. It's Phil Collins in a wig. <laughs> 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 He's a bit taller than Cookie. Other way around. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Shouldn't have stood there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> What's this face, Mick? I'm really sorry. <laughs> Anyone else? Don't be shy. Please. You mentioned being at uh, with Cappy for six months. Yes. Would you like to on that? Well, three months. Um, three months. Uh, yeah, he's mad as a hatter, really. Uh, <laughs> um, he was great, but... Then the next minute you hated him, you know, he's a very complex character. I haven't seen this film, I don't know if anyone's seen it, uh, whether it's true to life. I know his, his son's a really nice bloke. Um, we went on tour to Germany uh, for three weeks, two, two, two weeks, sorry, and Nigel was only a toddler then, so I was like, oh, he was a toddler. And they, we had this big swimming pool, which is just like a story, just it's like digressing a bit, but now he was in the, with all the players were in the pool and jumping about and... Some of the lads that didn't like Fluffy kept trying to drown his lad in the pool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's only man, it was, it was a bit of a, a bit of a know all at the time, little Nigel. But he's grown into a real nice man. I met when he first took over with Burton, I met him a few times I was at Doncaster. And it's not surprising, I think he could go right to the top as a manager. Burton gave him his chance for over ten years. They never really did anything for ten years. They're top of the league now and he's got his big chance at Derby and I think he could he could be better than his dad, because he's a slightly different character and quieter. But uh, Cluffy himself was a real troubled soul in some ways. He'd turn up, he'd play squash every morning, turn up at 11 o'clock, we'd already been training an hour and all this sort of stuff, sit in the middle of the pitch while you were playing, you'd play round and that was a two, he's just <laughs> fruitcake. But, um, you know, you can't knock him for what he did, he brought a lot of um, lads who'd maybe been, you know, in the autumn of their career, with some young players, and built really good sides. And one thing, when you put a shirt on for him, you never ever doubted what, you, you know, some people said, I'm not sure what the manager wants from me, the coach, you knew exactly what he you know, he wanted, and you did, and I think that's proven in the results.